how can we audit data privacy for machine learning algorithms? This is not an easy question to answer. Uh, depends on what exactly we mean by privacy, uh, what we consider as a privacy loss, uh, what are privacy risks against machine learning algorithms, and uh, what we expect from a privacy auditing process. In uh, the last few years, I've been working on analyzing privacy for machine learning, trying to find answers to these questions. And uh, the result of our research showed that they pose a serious threat to data privacy. Uh, they are vulnerable to a wide range of inference attacks. However, in practice, in most cases, they are being used with all their vulnerabilities without being properly uh, audited. I try to elaborate on what the risks are, uh, what's the definition of privacy, and how we can go about performing a quantitative privacy auditing for machine learning algorithms. So privacy policies and regulations, uh, in particular GDPR, do include suggestions for auditing as one of their main requirements. However, the focus is mostly on data collection, data sharing, access control, and basically all different ways that privacy uh, and private information could be directly leaked to unauthorized entities. In uh, machine learning pipeline, this is concerned with the entities that store the training data and run the training algorithm, and the servers that host the, uh, the trained model and get the input query data and compute the predictions. Obviously, the training data and the input queries could be very sensitive and contain personal information, and the access to such data needs to be limited to authorized users, and, and, and the algorithms and operations that we run on them need to preserve the confidentiality of data, such that uh, the, uh, the users that have access to those systems are not able to see the data in clear text. But this is not all the... Uh, privacy risk. Another significant yet uh, subtle information leakage happens when the model indirectly leaks information about its training data uh, to its users that are supposed to be uh, a wide range of uh, users. And this leakage happens through the model parameters or uh, their predictions. This is not a violation of access control or data confidentiality measures, which prevent only direct leakage, uh, but it's an obvious violation of data privacy, this time through indirect leakage. And, and this is a, a real threat. And here are a few examples that I can provide. Consider machine learning as a service platforms uh, provided by virtually all major cloud service providers. An entity can upload data to the cloud, train a model, and provide access to uh, users to do predictions uh, through very well-defined prediction APIs. We showed that without having any information about which models are being trained, and without having access to the intermediate steps of the computation as a user of this system, an adversary can tell with high confidence and accuracy if uh, data point has been included in the training set of, of a model. So an authorized user can infer sensitive information about data which he does not have access to. Right? So this obviously violates data privacy of those who contributed data uh, to the training set. Another example is the case of generative models, notably uh, that of uh, language models that generate text. An adversary can run similar inference attacks as in the ones that I mentioned for the uh, ML as a service platforms, but this time to partially reconstruct text from the training data. And, and what is important is that usually the atypical data, uh, which are more sensitive, are more vulnerable to these attacks. Last example that I want to uh, give is uh, the federated learning that is, by the way, wrongly advertised as a privacy enhancing technology. 
multiple entities, for example, hospitals or mobile phones, repeatedly share the models that they have locally trained on their private data with a server to be aggregated and shared back with them. So they repeat this, and after many iterations, the model that they train converges to some um, set of parameter values, which is hopefully more accurate than what they could have had by training only on their local data. So they don't share the data across the network, but they share the models repeatedly. We show that a curious server or a participant in federated learning can run inference attacks to reconstruct sensitive information about participants' local private data using various types of inference attacks. We also showed that an attacker can also fool other participants by sharing adversarial models so that they confess even more information about their training data. So going beyond running passive attacks, the adversary can run active inference attacks to learn more information about uh, the data of other participants. In all these examples, we show that the adversary can indirectly learn information about uh, the data of other participants. And all these examples show that for the case of high dimensional models trained on sensitive personal data sets, uh, the model is personal data. Models are as sensitive as the data on which they are trained. They have a tendency to memorize uh, information about their training data that can be extracted potentially by inference attacks. So given that machine learning is being used widely on all sorts of personal data, we need to extend privacy auditing to ML in order to analyze the privacy risks of indirect information leakage. And in this talk, I'm going to tell you how to do that in a systematic way. For this, I'm going to design a game that allows us to quantitatively measure such privacy risks. Assume that we have a data set and we use an algorithm to train a model. We want to know how much information the algorithm leaks about the data records in its training set. Here is how we designed the game. Let's add a new record to the training set and train a second model. So we want to know if a powerful attacker that gets one of these models at random can distinguish between the two cases. The case where data set does not include data record D, and the case where the data set includes data D. Note that the adversary only observes one model, which is randomly sampled from these two cases. And the question is whether the adversary can tell the difference between the two. If he succeeds, it indicates that the algorithm leaks information about this additional data record. And this information goes beyond the general information that any user of the model is expected to learn from the data. And if the attacker succeeds many times in this game, as we change data record D and as we change the training data and as we run the algorithm multiple times, then we can confidently conclude that the ML algorithm is violating data privacy and it is too risky to be deployed. We call this attack algorithm, which the adversary uses in that game, membership inference attack. Because given a model and a data point, the adversary asks whether this data point was part of the training set. We simulate this attack and use this method to audit privacy for machine learning. For this, we can use uh, well-established statistical methods called hypothesis testing to solve the problem. I'm not going to talk about the details of these tests, but 
at the high level, what the adversary does is to use a couple of statistical tests, which compare the behavior of the model on the target data with respect to uh, some reference baselines. We enable him to distinguish the, the behavior of the model on its training data versus the behavior of the model on, on, on the data outside its training set. And here are a couple of tests. In simplified form, one test involves comparing the error of the model, the target model, on target data point D with the error of the, the target model on some random samples from the universe. If the error of the model on the target data and random samples from the universe are similar, then maybe we can conclude that this data point has not been a member of the training set because the model does not distinguish between them. And uh, the, the, the main idea behind this is that there is potentially difference between the error of the model on, on its training set versus its test set. So members versus non-members are distinguishable when we look at the error of the model. Another test, again in simplified form, is to compare the error of the target model on the target data point D with the error of some reference models which are not trained on D and are trained on some random samples from the population and see if they are similar. Again, if the error of uh, the target model on D and the error of the reference models on D are similar, we can probably conclude that this data is a non-member. But in either of these tests, if we find some information that convince us that there is some uh, difference in behavior of the models with respect to data point D compared to our references, then we can predict as member. So these tests enable us to quantify different types of the error that the adversary makes. Uh, but in a simplified way, the, the success rate of the attacker is a rough measure for privacy loss, uh, which is part of the output of the privacy auditing process. The perfect for privacy would be when best membership inference attacks cannot beat a random guess strategy where the adversary has no idea whether the data point was um, a member or not, a 50% uh, success rate. So this methodology has already influenced the AI security and privacy guidelines. And uh, following this, we have implemented uh, the whole framework as an open source tool called machine learning privacy meter, which is currently being used in academia and also being adopted in, in industry. We simply provide data, training algorithm and models and the tool performs the complete privacy auditing. It provides numerical reports about privacy loss of the model, <clears throat> as well as uh, privacy scores for each record in the training set. So to know which data points are more vulnerable than others. This enables you to compare different training algorithms um, and also different models and decide whether it is uh, safe to uh, use a model or not. This also enables us to uh, evaluate the efficacy of different uh, protection algorithms. The evaluation method and the, the tool can apply on all different types of data from microdata to images and text. And here I provide a few examples. Let's train a language model on speaker annotated TED Talks and check whether we can identify which talks are used for training. We can see that as the number of sentences that an adversary knows about the particular speaker increases, the chance that he can correctly infer the membership 
of uh, that speaker in the training set increases very rapidly to 100%. This is due to uh, the large capacity of language models and their tendency for memorization. Basically, there is not much privacy when using these kind of models. Uh, the auditing reports also gives us the list of most vulnerable points, uh, which are the more atypical points in the data set. These are some examples. As you can see, these are uh, you know, sensitive topics, um, cracking, Stuxnet, or secrets of surveillance state, which are different uh, from the uh, usual talks on, on TED. Another example is on image classification models. And we observed that as the number of model parameters increase, the model becomes more vulnerable to attacks, even though this large capacity could help the models to uh, learn um, uh, models with high generalizability. So to conclude, uh, given the privacy vulnerabilities of machine learning algorithms, given the fact that their capacity to learn complex tasks increases, um, I would say enabling access to models without auditing them and, and without mitigating the risks and their privacy risks uh, would not be much worse than allowing unauthorized access to data. So these are serious uh, privacy risks especially because we are training many, many models on our sensitive data. And it's not a matter of one single model um, being uh, uh, risky. So ML Privacy Meter aids uh, regulatory uh, compliance uh, through a systematic method to audit data privacy for a wide range of uh, machine learning algorithms. It's an open source tool, uh, and, and if uh, you are interested, you can, you can go and contribute to that. Use it um, uh, for your systems. And uh, here is also the list of references for the algorithm that we use for developing this tool. I'd like to thank uh, the audience for listening to this talk, and I'll be happy to take questions.